Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Dragomon Academy blog. This is our fourth edition of our Student Spotlight series, and today we are here with Tuana and her teacher, Dela. So first, we're going to ask Tuana to tell us just a little bit about herself. Hi, so I, um, I'm half English, half Turkish, and I grew up in Istanbul, and I went to a French-Turkish school here and graduated last year and took the SATs this year. Let's talk a little bit about the test-taking process. So this question will be for your teacher, Dela. Uh, can you tell us about when you began the lessons, how long you've been taking lessons? Well, Tuana agreed to do a 10-hour session with us. So we started about a month, is that right? A bit, two weeks. Yeah, two weeks. Oh, two, two weeks, two, weeks before weeks. she was scheduled to take the exam for the second time around. And so we did sessions of two hours every two or three days. Mm -hmm. And what was the outcome? Shoot of the scores. <laughs> um, suddenly, because my, my writing scores were, were not good the first time I tried. Um, and Dela really helped with my writing scores. Um, so suddenly, I went up about 200 points, I think. And Dela, tell us a little bit about the SAT, because I'm sure some people in Turkey have never heard of this test, possibly. The SAT is comprised of, of course, uh, a mathematics portion, which Tuan and I didn't focus on since her scores were already really high in that area. But it also uh, has a verbal reasoning section, which, uh, which tests the test taker's ability to answer questions dealing with, like, subject verb agreement, grammar, uh, vocabulary, also cohesion and organization within written texts. There's also a writing component which has test takers do a persuasive piece. It's a test that is used by universities to see if candidates have a general capacity to do some important academic tasks that they might have to do in their fields. SAT has a, a mathematics component which we didn't focus on since Tuana already performed really strongly in that. It has a verbal reasoning component, which deals with vocabulary, grammar, uh, paragraph construction, and it has a writing portion in which you have to write a persuasive essay. So I would like to know a little bit now, what are your, your hopes for university? What would you like to study, and what does your future hold, do you think? I would very much like to study aerospace engineering. Um, and um, I hope to study in an English-speaking school wherever I go. Um, so that's why I've applied to America and England. Um, yes, and hopefully I will get into a good university. Have you started the application process? Yes, I have. Um, I am applying, um, well, I, I got into an English school really last year. Um, so I, I got into Bristol University in England, um, aerospace engineering, but um, I, I really wanted to see what I can do in America, and I've started my application, and I shall let you guys know when mm -hmm. I know myself. Well, good luck, and I'm sure that any school would be happy to have you in the program. So what attracted you to aerospace engineering? That is a question I honestly cannot answer, because it's just one of those things since you know, you don't know why, but for a long time you just re you're just re it's like why do you like music for me? Um, because um, for example, Apollo thirteen has been my favorite movie since I was six or eight, um, and it's just something I've wanted to do for a very long time, but I couldn't give it a name. And then um, last year, not last year, two years ago when I was um, looking for a, univer you know, a university course that I would be interested in. I hadn't heard about the aerospace engineering name. I always thought I would study mechanical engineering or something like that and go on to it. And when I found out about it, I was, yes, this is the thing I have to study. Do you believe in UFOs? No, <laughs> I do not believe in UFOs. <laughs> so Tuana, which one was the most difficult portion for you? 
Um, the vocabulary was the most hard uh, part of the test for me because there are lots of words that you just don't know if you don't work on it, if you don't focus on it. And then the next uh, hard one was the writing bit for the essay because there are some things that they ask for you to do at the essay that you wouldn't necessarily know if you don't, don't have the, the help from people who know um, what the SAT is about. And when I first started, I just would write an essay like I would at school. And I went to French Turkish school, and obviously that's not what they were looking for. Um, so I needed help with that. So I believe also, when I was taking the SAT, the vocab section was also the most difficult for me. So I'm interested, Dela, in how you prepared Tuana and how you helped her improve for the vocab section. Well, of course, Tuana had to do some learning of new vocabulary, but I think more importantly, she learned some test-taking strategies. For example, prediction, uh, reading the question, and then before actually looking at the multiple choice options, predicting the answer. So she had some idea of what the answer might be, be before she looked at the options, which made it easier for her to eliminate the incorrect answers. And I know that so many people actually are always asking us as teachers, how do I improve my vocabulary? How do I improve my vocabulary? So actually, Dela, what are your techniques for learning new vocabulary? Hmm. So for instance, when I'm learning Turkish, uh, in, in, when I was at lower levels of Turkish learning, I used flashcards a great deal for memorization. That was my main learning technique. But I can't stress enough the importance of reading. It is so important to read a variety of different texts, magazines, newspapers, short stories, fiction, nonfiction, because that allows you to not only learn new vocabulary, but to encounter the vocabulary that you already know, again, within a meaningful context. What do you think makes you a good uh, test-taking teacher? Well, I think that in general, in my teaching, I try to go for learner independence. And so I try to, uh, first of all, give learners strategies that they can apply on their own without me. And so when you're in a test, it's all you. So that, I think, is very helpful for people that I'm coaching for a test that we have a set of like very simple, like a protocol, like first you do this, then you do this, then you do this. And that's it. It's a, That's the strategy. It's almost like a checklist. So I think that that can be helpful. Did you know any of these testing techniques the first time you took the SAT? No, <laughs> I did not know these techniques, especially when it came to um, essay writing, because when it comes to the reading section, you can sometimes guess um, when it comes to the writing section where you have to fill in with a certain vocab or finding the error, um, again, even though it was the hardest uh, section for me, finding the error, you could guess. Um, but when it, came, when it comes to the essay, there are just some certain rules you have to obey and you have to, you know, you have to write an essay in a, cer in a certain way. And I just did not know what the technique was. <laughs> and Tuana, how do you think these strategies helped you the second time you were taking the SAT test? Well, the strategies for, for the SAT really helped me because, um, and it's obvious when you look at my, my scores, because um, certain certain sections in the SAT, especially the, the writing sections, you just, especially if you're a foreigner, taking the SATs and um, yes English is my um, is my first language but um, again I think due to the fact that I am British English I didn't know a lot of rules I didn't know a, a lot of you know ways to think um, during the test and they really 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 helped me um, the second way the second round um, the first time I took the test it was all all my doing. I didn't get any help o at all. And my, you know, my score wasn't bad, but it was obvious um, after the second one how much knowing certain strategies and knowing certain rules and um, thinking a certain way helped. Have you ever tried astronaut food? 
astronaut ice cream I've tried. It's delicious. And dry. It's nothing like ice cream. Uh, what about alien life forms? Do I believe in them? I'm um, Honestly, um, I, I just can't say that we're the only living, you know, living beings in the whole entire universe. But I, you know, just, I don't know. Uh, what about your plans for the future of aerospace engineering? How will you affect the entire sector? My hope is that, and my dream is that I can work with, um, work in developing satellites and um, space shuttles. Um, and I, this is the, my craziest dream is to be able to work in NASA. Um, and yeah, that's it. And finally, I would like to first ask Dela. What is your advice for people who are trying to learn English on their own? Well, I think for learning anything, we all has to keep we all have to have something that motivates us to learn. For example, for Tuana, it's her dream to study aerospace engineering, and so that motivates her to do the rigorous, sometimes boring work of studying for the SAT. And it's important to keep sight of whatever that goal is in order to uh, keep up your energy, to keep up your motivation, and to keep you on task. And Tuana, what is your advice for people who are learning English on their own? Um, my advice would be don't do it on your own, um, because um, I think when it comes to languages, to, to have the exposure to other people who are learning the language or who know the language is very important. Um, I also think that reading and listening is very important when it comes to learning languages. For example, right now, I'm trying to learn Spanish on my own because, um, and Spanish is a bit easier for me because it's a lot, it's very similar to French, but um, I feel the need to have another Spanish speaker um, who I can ask questions to. Would you like to go into space? I would, I would love to go into space. Did you know that if you go into space for a long time that your bones will shrink and you will get fat and bald? Fat and bald? I did not know. I didn't know about the bones. <laughs> Are you sure you want to go into space? I would never want to go into space. No? Personally, personally. That's, I like the Earth. You like the Earth. <laughs> Virgin Atlantic is preparing a, like a space tour. They will just skim the surface of Earth and come back down. Like it just seems so uncomfortable. It's the most, it's, there's no gravity. I, I have to, down. I have to pee in a bag. Oh yeah, that, now that, I can't argue with. <laughs> <laughs>